The fact that a group of us at Texas A&M were asked literally hundreds of times in one day what a woman is, is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. No joke, I don't think a single one of us on the Unfuck America tour got a single question asked more often by the Charlie Kirk clan members than what is a woman or define a woman. And I was like, guys, I don't understand why this is so hard. The definition of a woman is just simply the pronouns of a person who's never going to sleep with you. Are you guys just asking as a genuine question because you've never actually spoken to one or, or what? But I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm a nice guy. And since you guys asked so, so, so much, I figured I'd make a science video explaining the very non-binary science behind sex and gender. Now I'm gonna put a disclaimer right on the front of this. Microbiology, not my strongest suit, right? But like a normal, non-Dunning-Kruger American, when I'm not an expert in something, I go and read what the experts have to say about that topic. When it comes to hormones and chromosomes and DNA and genetics and medical jargon, there's a lot of acronyms for shit that looks really hard to pronounce, so I'm not gonna try because it looks hard. So this is gonna be an explanation by layman's for layman's but if you want the big brain shit i pulled most of it from a scientific american article called sex redefined when it comes to sex as we know that there's only two right dudes and chicks but usually the argument when we're talking about trans rights is gender separate from sex as a social construct and that exists on a spectrum and while that is true the first part of my statement was not biological sex does not exist on a binary not even a little bit like i learned a lot reading up on this which i had no idea about right off the bat intersex people exist or people who have dsd differences of sex development DSD DSD conservatively affects over 80 million people, and it could be way higher than that because many of them go their entire lives without knowing it. For example, surgeons reported operating on a 70-year-old to remove a hernia and found a womb. This was a person who lived as a man their entire life and fathered four children. Without the surgery, he would have never have known that he was intersex. DSD can affect people in, in literally countless numbers of ways, from having both sex organs to no sex organs to sex organs that don't fit into either binary category of male or female. It can cause people who have a Y chromosome to develop female sex organs or people who don't have a Y chromosome to develop male sex organs. And that right there alone should be enough to tell you to stop trying to put gender into a binary that doesn't fucking exist, right? Because not only is it wrong, it's harmful and dangerous. Parents of intersex children will often have their infants undergo gender assignment surgery to have them reflect the gender that the parents choose. But what's worse is then often those children will grow up and develop characteristics of a different gender than what their parents assign. But it gets even more complex and complicated than that because when we start looking at genes, DNA, and cells, some people have male DNA and their genes and cells reflect that. Other people have female DNA and their genes and cells reflect that. And some people have what's called mosaicism, where their genes, cells, and or chromosomes and DNA do not entirely reflect the sex organs that they possess. Now, there's a few different ways this happens, some more common than others, and pretty much all of it's too complicated for me to wrap my little head around, but the point is that you could be multiple sexes and still only have one set of sex organs. What's more is there's studies that suggest that there's no permanence to biological sex either. But apparently you can develop genes or cells that have different sexual biology than what you have later in life, or you can be born with them and lose them later in life. Studies in mice actually suggest that the gonads teeter between male and female throughout your entire life. Alterations in the gene of FOXL2, I think it is, can make the gonads go from producing female, like egg producing cells to sperm producing cells and back again. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is way more that adds even more nuance that would make this video two hours long. The ultimate point is this. There is absolutely no scientific or biological definition that can define a man or a woman in a binary. Doesn't exist. Except for the fact that everybody who identifies as a woman instantly goes dry when somebody who identifies as a man asks them to define a woman. That one might be one for the biology books. And while I learned so much on this topic, I had no idea about researching it. Ultimately, I really learned nothing. Because going into this, my thoughts and opinions on what a woman was was to mind my fucking business. And unless you're a biologist, that should be the only thoughts and opinions you have as well. If a person tells you that the gender constructs of a man or a woman are what best represents them, then that's what the fuck they are. If they tell you that neither of those constructs represent them, then that's what the fuck they are not. If they feel like they are a he or a she or a them or a they, that's what the fuck they are and that's what the fuck you call them. And maybe, just maybe, if you start respecting people just a teensy weensy bit more, you might get the opportunity to identify as something other than an incel. But the fact that regardless of what disingenuous Jesus jerks suggests, there's no general about gender grounded in genetics? Well, that is pretty mind-boggling.